your latest research. What are you working on? Um, most recently, I've been working on the topic of what we call ubiquitous learning, which is the way in which uh, learning processes are changing in the context of technologies that make learning more of an anytime, anywhere opportunity. With wireless networks uh, and portable devices, handheld devices, it's increasingly possible for people, young people and adults, to access learning opportunities wherever they are um, through the internet, uh, not only when they're in a formal learning institution. And I think that that has several implications for education, uh, specifically including how people learn. And that's one of the things that we're looking at at the Ubiquitous Learning Institute, which I direct. And, and how is it that you think people learn? Well, I think that there are several changes, and I'll mention three briefly. Mm -hmm. One is, I think learning is more of a just-in-time phenomenon. That is, people now have the opportunity to learn what they need to know when they need to know it in a situation where it's relevant and useful to them. Uh, there's a pretty well-known example of a fellow uh, who was caught in the rubble in the earthquake in Haiti that happened about a year ago. He had a heavy piece of, of concrete trapping his leg and he was stuck. He couldn't get help and he couldn't get out. He would have bled to death, but he had his cell phone with him. And he was able to access information on his cell phone about how to create a tourniquet that would prevent the, the bleeding oh. and save his own life. That's a good example of just-in-time learning. He had an immediate purpose and need to know something and an immediate applicability. Now, that's a very dramatic example, but in the workplace, in a lot of other contexts, people are now able to learn what they need, when they need to use it. A second change, I think, is that the learning has to change to fit the different situations and environments in which people are learning. Learning in the classroom takes a particular form, but learning in the home, in the workplace, in the coffee house, or in other contexts is a different kind of learning, uh, and I also think a different kind of learning process. And that leads to the third change, I think, which is that learning is becoming, I think, much more a collaborative activity. Sometimes learning is individual, as in the gentleman in Haiti I just mentioned, but more often the networks through which we interact on the Internet make the sharing of information, the sharing of knowledge, and teaching one another possible through distributed social networks of people who share a particular issue or topic or concern that's important to them. And so I think that collaborative nature of learning also changes the way learning happens. In many classrooms, learning is a very individualized process. And this learning anytime and, and at anywhere, yeah. does it affect the quality of education and the way courses are designed? Or Yes, I think that uh, certainly we have to rethink the curriculum and our teaching approaches to fit uh, these ubiquitous contexts, these anytime, anywhere contexts. One of the characteristics about learning in this new environment is that it's a more continuous process. Learning doesn't have a specific starting point and ending point. Uh, you, can see, you can see this in a way as extending the idea of lifelong learning to really something more like continual learning, continuous learning, learning that is potentially going on all the time or at any particular moment. Whereas our approaches to teaching often chop up learning into chunks that are convenient for us institutionally, a class, a semester, a degree, a school year. Well, those temporal trunks make sense for us institutionally in schools, but they don't necessarily fit the nature of when and how learning is happening in the real world. So I think adapting our approaches so that they fit more that continuous process requires us to rethink our processes of teaching. But isn't there too much information that could saturate you? Yes, I think that's certainly true. Uh, it's the good thing and the bad thing about the Internet. Uh, and I think that that has two implications for teaching. One is, in some situations, there doesn't have to be a teacher. Learners can often access information, lectures, videos, texts. They can explain things to them directly that don't require a teacher. But the other implication is that one of the really important tasks for teachers is to help learners learn how to filter and select from the vast amount of information that's available on the Internet. A lot of it isn't any good. Uh, 
They're um, distractions. They're distractions. It's garbage. A lot of it isn't, isn't true. And so learning to filter, select, and integrate information from the Internet is itself an important learning goal that requires educators to help learners use the Internet effectively without being overwhelmed or, as you say,